Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. You're also able to get Destiny 2 when purchasing selected NVIDIA GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti graphics cards. So check out the link in the video description to go get yourself a new graphics card and a new game. What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. Now, one of the most important parts about a high-end gaming system is temperatures. If your component temperature is too high, you are going to get thermal throttling, which is gonna reduce your performance, and also it's going to wear out your hardware a lot faster, or potentially even damage it. For processors, we get a bunch of different coolers to cool down the CPUs, like the stock Intel or AMD coolers. You get a bunch of air coolers ranging in prices, and then also, of course, you get water coolers, whether it being an all-in-one or a custom water cooling loop. But for today, we are going to take a look at GPUs. These days, we get so many different brands and models of graphics cards, but also ranging in different cooling systems. We get GPUs with one, two, three, and even sometimes four fans. But that's mostly for the Asian market, like the uh, iChill. And then also, like the CPUs, you do also get the water cooling graphics cards. Now, of course, the water cooling graphics cards will have a much lower temperature than the air-cooled ones, but probably still like 95 or 90% of people still have the standard air-cooled cards. But now what I want to find out is what will the cooling differences be between graphics cards with one, two, and three fans. So for my testing, I got three GTX 1060 cards. The card with one fan being a Zotac GTX 1060 three gig mini. For the two fan card, I used my Gigabyte G1 GTX 1060 three gig. And then one of the only 1060s with three fans, I'm using my Asus Strix GTX 1060 six gig. Now, I know the Strix is a 6 gig card with more CUDA cores, higher memory and whatnot, but for the testing, it'll just have to do because to my knowledge, you don't really get a 3 gig card with 3 fans. And this is also just all I had, so that's just gonna have to be. So as for the case, I'm using my Corsair 460X with 6 Corsair LL series RGB fans set to 700 RPM. For my Ryzen 1800X, I use the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Turbo running at 1200 RPM. All of these were constant through all of the testing as well. Now for the GPUs, I tested them at idle, 25%, 50%, 75%, and then also at 100% fan speeds to see what the difference in cooling would be. Now keep in mind, each card is from a different manufacturer and they have their own designs for heat sinks and fans. So this is not a complete apples to apples comparison. Also, it was a bit of a hot day at about 31 degrees, which will also increase the temperatures a bit. So please just keep that in mind. So from my testing, the difference between the two fan and the three fan card wasn't really that big. The three fan card being of course a six gig card, so it could possibly have produced more heat than a three gig model. But honestly, if you're not really going to heavily overclock the card, that will increase the temperatures of the, of the card. I don't really think it's gonna really make that big of a difference having two fans versus three fans. But now comparing the one fan card to the two fan card, there I could see a big difference. Firstly, on idle, the other two cards had silent mode, which stopped the fans from spinning until it hit a temperature threshold. The G1 was just above the temperature threshold, that's why it was running at 22% fan speed, and that's mostly due to it being a hot day. But now, the Strix card was completely silent, with the fans not spinning at all. But with the Zotac, even on idle, it was already running at 59% fan speed. So don't expect a silent card. As for testing the cards in game at 25% fan speed, the one fan card had a minimum fan speed of 40%. So I couldn't really test it at 25%. And looking at the temps, I didn't really want to either. At 50% fan speed, I could test the one fan card, but it was already running at 82 degrees and was thermal throttling. At 75% fan speed, the one fan card didn't thermal throttle anymore, but it was still running at a toasty 80 degrees. And at 100% fan speed, the one fan card only dropped to 77 degrees, which is still 12 degrees hotter than the other two. 
Also for FPS, the Zotac was 4 FPS behind the G1. It did have a lower core clock, which would have helped with the FPS, but it would also have increased the temperatures. And we saw when hitting anything above 80 degrees, it started to thermal throttle. Now, you do get other mini cards with higher clock speeds, like the EVGA Mini GTX 1060. You get a 3 gig and a 6 gig model, which will give you somewhat of a higher FPS because of the higher clock speeds. But again, that's also going to increase your temperatures even more, even if it does have a better cooling solution and a better fan. So at the end of the day, if you have a mini ITX system, then a mini card will be fine because it's still nice and small and you want to fit everything nice together. But if you do have a mid or full tower, I would just rather say spend a tiny bit more and get the two fan cards. You're not going to have to worry about high temperatures and wearing out the fans because that does happen sometimes. Also, I'm not saying the mini cards are bad. They do perform quite well and I know a lot of people do have them and they game fine with them. But prepare for some drawbacks like lower FPS, higher temperatures and more noise. So I would probably say just pay a tiny bit more and get yourself a card with two fans. If not for yourself, do it for a card. Don't make it uh, suffer. Just cool it down a bit more. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I didn't really overclock the cards because I didn't want to overclock the, the mini Zotac. That would have just kind of almost destroyed it. Uh, you do, like again, you do get other EVGA GTX 1060s that you can uh, use that does have better cooling solutions that you can perhaps overclock a bit. But again, you're going to wear it out a lot quicker because of the temperatures. So again, just go for a two fan cord. You're going to have better overclocks and it's not going to run that hot. Also, I use the GTX 1060s again because that's kind of all I had. I know you get like 1070s and 1080s as well. I think it's only like one 1080 with, which is a mini card and I didn't have that so I didn't want to test that. So this won't be the best comparison between all of the cards but it is the best I can do. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, share, comment, comment. Also, if you have any suggestions for um, what I should do next, please let me know in the comments below and of course i know there's there are going to be some haters because of how i did the video and stuff like that so just chill out it was just a comparison between the stuff so yeah but thanks for watching guys and i will check all of you next time cheers guys